Hey guys, God bless. Welcome back to my channel. I am Charlene and I have an exciting video because y'all, I was in a little bit of a dry spell. Like I was like, okay, God, do you have anything for me? And it's like, you know, I just really been busy in my home and I feel like this is God's will too. Like, okay, there's a time and season for everything. And y'all don't have my typical videos, like um, my Bible study or study with me's and stuff like that. But, um, and marriage, but you know, I've been trying to be really attentive to God with that and not just go on my own whim because that is serious business. But anywho, fun video, Christian girl tag. This young lady reached out to me on, uh, no, on Instagram. And y'all, I was so late seeing her message because when you're not friends with someone, they don't put it in your main inbox. So I was like, this is two weeks ago. And then it was about to be three weeks because life has been life -ing. I asked you guys, side note, please pray for Bella and Jace. Bella's birthday is tomorrow and she's sick. Jace is also sick. They have been tested for everything and it all came back negative. But the weather has been up and down too. Um, Jace is asthmatic. Bella was doing a little bit wheezing herself. It's unfortunate because I've been praying and eyeing her like, oh, does she have asthma too? So just be praying for them because they're little babies, you know, they can't really help themselves. But anywho, so this young lady reached out to me. Her YouTube name is She's a Bible Nerd. That's what it looks like. If you guys can see. I don't know because the camera, I'm trying to use the benefit of the new phone and the new camera. So it's turned around. But yeah, that's her YouTube. I don't want to mess up her name. Euodia, Adia, please forgive me. But I've been checking out her YouTube. Love it. You guys make sure you go subscribe. Again, she's a Bible nerd, which is a cool name. I would have gotten that name if I thought of it. <laughs> but anywho, question time. Christian girl tag. This is to help YouTubers grow Christian YouTubers. And I'm all for that. You guys know that is my passion. Like when I get to a certain level, I'm, I want to bring people with me. Okay. But anywho, let's answer these questions because I don't want to make these videos too long. And hopefully we get done in one, right? Question number one says, how long have you been saved and when did you become saved? Okay, so I've been saved since <sighs> confessing with my mouth. I was 11 years old. Confessing with my heart. Honestly, I was in my late 20s. And if you talk to anybody, they can say, hey, this time or this day I actually got saved in church. And then this day in time is when a transformation took place in my heart. Like when I was 11, I was a child. So I thought as a child, I lived as a child and I moved as a child. But when I became an adult, I put away my childish things. And it didn't hit me until um, between before getting married with my husband and the first year of marriage when I said, this is serious business and I'm ready to surrender. And y'all Satan fought me hard because I was content. I was lukewarm and I was fine. So I thought, but that's a whole nother story and testimony. But y'all that those, that's my date went with my mouth, 11 years old with my heart in my late twenties. Next question. What's your favorite Bible verse and what does it mean to you? It's hard to have one, especially when you, when you get to a certain level of understanding God and who he is. But every time I hear favorite verse, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You will reap what you sow. And you may say, that's not, that's not a fun verse, but listen to me. What I love about this verse is it keeps you humble and grounded. God would not be mocked. You will reap what you sow. And this keeps me in remembrance of what I've done, what I'm doing, and what I need to do. The sanctification process. It's a beautiful thing. And you have to be reminded constantly like, hey, you can't play with God. You shouldn't play with God. You should not want to play with God's children, your sister and brother in Christ, your neighbors. And you want to get 
what you're giving out. So put the effort, effort into it and love your neighbor, love everyone, be kind, be gentle. I'm always, um, I know my husband's like, I'm sick of that word, but I'm always talking to my husband about grace. We need, y'all, there is no greater amount of grace than hanging on that cross. And we need that every day. So if we need it, we need it then, we need it now, then everybody else needs it too. Next, what's your favorite Christian song and why? Just when I thought I knew the answer to this song. Okay. Ultimately, my go-to song when I'm scared, when I'm afraid, when I'm sad, when I'm overly happy is Total Praise by Richard Smallwood. And y'all, side note, because I know people feel a way about this sometimes, but Fantasia has her version of the song. And it wasn't even like a performance. It was her and some friends. I think they had got together like right after COVID and stuff. It's something about that version that just like you can, it's just something. Like you can tell when somebody's really singing from their heart and their soul. And it's like, if you don't know the name, of, um, like I said, the song is, I'm not going to sing, but <laughs> I will live. My eyes to the hills. Y'all know the song. But anyway, that's my song, y'all. But recently, I've been holding on to the goodness of God. Um, All my life, you have been faithful. But y'all know I can't sing. Definitely can't sing. I wish I could sing, but that song has been ministering to me. Like, just think of the word. Like, God has truly been faithful. But I don't mean to preach. I'm sorry. I don't want to take too long. But um, I think the version I've been listening to has been BB Winans. But it don't matter. Y'all know it don't matter. But the words is what resonated with me. Um, what's your favorite thing about church? organized fellowship <laughs> and being an introvert i like that because it's really designed where you would have to be a low down dirty person to deviate from the plan of the service and wheel of god to you know for your own selfish means and desires like you would have to go out your way and do that like you come to church you praise and worship you pray you hear the word you break away and, you know, even my old pastor used to say, don't linger because lingering equals gossiping and talking about something you probably ain't got no business talking about. And that's so true. So I love the fact that it's organized fellowship where you have a structure, you have a foundation, use it, use it to the best of your ability, stay in decency and in order and everything will be all right. That sounds like such a pastor's wife answer, didn't it? <laughs> I just thought about that. But it's true. Even before I became a pastor's wife, um, if you could meet Jesus right now, what would your first question action be? <sighs> the flesh part of me would be who is really my father. And I don't mean to get all sentimental, but I mentioned to you guys before that I abruptly discovered that the man that I knew to be my father is probably 99.9%. Matter of fact, he's not my father. Like, it's no doubt. It's just that it was said in a way that, you know, you kind of to break the ice, like not just a whole slap in the face, but he's not my father. And um, the flesh me would definitely be asking God, who is my father or who was my father, which... I know once we get on that side, it doesn't matter. And that that's what motivates me and keeps me going because I have a father and I know him well. <laughs> Glory be to God. God is my father and he takes good care of me and he listens to me. And he consoles me. And he hugs me. He holds my hand. He was present when I said I do. That's the father I know. And what greater father than him, right? We're not going to get sentimental up here. 
Um, oddest place that you have ever prayed. Okay, when I was in college at Elizabeth City State University, their library has like an abandoned section on the side and has like this long stairway thing. And I'm assuming it goes up to the second floor and probably for security reasons, it, it probably didn't go so well. So the grass and stuff kind of grown up and that door isn't being used. So I discovered that one night when I was walking and I was feeling depressed and down and I was just going, going, and I said, a dark space. Cause I was looking for a space where can't nobody see me. I just wanted to cry my eyes out. And I remember going there many nights and just saying, Lord, help me, please. Lord, what is wrong with me? You know, just frustrated, aggravated, sad, whatever the issue is. And, and just pouring out my heart and looking up to the sky and catching a breeze, the wind and, and everything. And like I said, it's so secluded. and It's the perfect place because you can see people, but people can't see you. And I love it. I, I, I love secluded places. Um, hence, stay tuned for my prayer closet coming soon but anywho yeah i it's an odd place like if you looked at it you was like why was somebody even want to go sit up there but i didn't mind i had a purpose in mind and it was to lamb it and that i did all right are you ready if jesus were to come tomorrow obviously with this question we want to be careful not to be too confident but for one of the few times in my life I know what I know, and I believe what I know, and that is Jesus is real, Jesus is God, and Jesus is returning, and he was born of a virgin birth, and I believe that with my whole entire heart and existence, and with that being said, because I believe I am ready for Jesus to return, I am ready to go to my new home, and but before I go, obviously, I want to gather other people with me. I don't want to just go by myself. That's the non-introvert part of me. That's the whole complete part of me to say, you know what? I want all of us to be ready. Amen. All right. So how do you openly share your faith? YouTube. <laughs> um, on Facebook, every now and again, I will post something, but I'm slowly feeling myself pulling away from that because... Like I told y'all many times, like, you know, even with Jesus, like your own home people will reject you and be rude and be nasty and be ignorant, whereas a stranger will even entertain you with kindness. And it gets frustrated and it's aggravated and it's like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I keep pressing on. And then, I don't know, like, it's just, I always had this weird feeling about Facebook in the first place, which is why I try not to get up there. But it's like to the people you connect with, but not really directly connect with, that's a good way to kind of communicate with them. You know, you don't have the new numbers of someone or you don't know where they live now. You know, it, it's a way, great way to keep family close knit when they're far away. But I do want to, I want to take YouTube to the next level. I want to start being more active on Instagram. I was talking with someone about this, which I mentioned in a few moments. But I want to utilize these other platforms. Um, I've never created a TikTok. I don't plan on getting on TikTok, although people say it's a good way to rapidly get, you know, the gospel out to people. But I believe God can use whatever I have. And obviously, if God say make one, I'll make one. But I doubt it. <laughs> um, I'm really content here. And I expect... God to mature me and grow me and build this community right here. Um, what advice would you give a new Christian? Oh, you know what? Back up. How do you openly share your faith? I guess how and where is not really the same thing. But obviously, I make videos. Um, I make posts. Um, I do want to start wearing graphic designs and stuff from Christian companies and kind of, you know, get it out there. Um, this is a blessed girl shirt. If you see, I don't know if you can see, I don't know how the camera angle is, but I do want to start doing that. I do want to work with some Christian companies and just put it on me. Jesus is God. Like, um, that's what I want to do. Like, I wouldn't mind doing that. I know people say, well, I do it for some free merch. I don't even want to kind of say it like that, which is technically what it is. 
but I'm not trying to get new merch. I just want to spread the gospel. I want to spread the message out there to any and everyone that will hear and pay attention to my shirt. Anywho, what advice would you give a new Christian? My very first thing that I wish that I had took, taken more serious is discipline. Discipline yourself. And discipline yourself with grace and love. Because there's a lot of people who play church, who play the faith, and like the uh like the seed in the thorn in the bushes like as soon as them thorns and bushes grow over that it's like you forget that you even were ministered to so discipline making sure you're watching your environment and your community around you make sure you reach out to those stronger than you those who are more mature in the lord like definitely would this would be my advice because it's hard dealing with it by yourself being a Christian, um, it's even when you're a mature Christian, like I would consider myself kind of mature a little bit. I don't know. But even I have days where I'm just like, oh, man, I feel like I'm losing my mind. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. And then that's when, hey, I can reach out to my older sister or I can talk to some other close friends or some people I've met on YouTube. You you need someone. Like, don't think it's a cakewalk because it isn't, but it's uh, walk that's worth it in the end. Finally, who do you tag? I'm going to show y'all better than I can tell y'all. <laughs> I'm going to say that word name right there. Oh, yeah, it did come up. <laughs> I've been watching her videos. All right, all right, all right. This is who I tag, and I need you to make this video sooner than later. Don't be like me. And procrastinate. I know you got a lot going on, but I want my girl, good faith with Kay. I want you to be or to make the next Christian girl tag video. I don't know if you ever done one before, but I nominate you to do one. I did one and I would love to hear your answers. So that's my addition. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I enjoyed doing it. It's something different, something unique. And who doesn't want to help Christian YouTubers grow, right? So you guys make sure you like, you share, you subscribe, not only to me, but to everyone else that has been mentioned. If you know other Christian YouTubers or if you're one yourself, feel free to comment your name down below. You never know who's watching, what someone needs. You know, I know some people have different niche and uh, habits or hobbies and stuff, but y'all, I find myself watching videos that I can't even really relate to, but I enjoy them. So you never know. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.